So good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us uh, for today's dialogue. I am Solofina Nikesa, a professional officer with ICLI Africa, uh, working with the Urban Systems Unit. So I'll be your facilitator for today's dialogue. And uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Kisumu Independent Food Systems Summit Dialogue. Uh, before we begin, I would like to remind you of our dialogue protocols. One, the dialogue will be recorded and therefore by participating, you are consenting to be recorded. When we enter periods of discussion, we hope that you'll eagerly participate. Uh, for plenary discussions, you can raise your hand and when called upon, please unmute yourself. And it would be great um, if you could put on your videos too, um, so that we can uh, we can see you. I would also uh, welcome active discussions in our chat boxes, and for you to add questions throughout the presentations. Uh, please use the chat boxes uh, right now to introduce yourselves. Uh, please um, give us your name and where you're calling in from, as well as where you're currently uh, working. And then when presenting, uh, this is to our presenters, please keep time. Our presenters are allocated a maximum of 10 minutes, and this will allow us to, um, to go through our full program as well as to move um, smoothly. Please be brief and to the point. Um, so thank you very much uh, for joining us for today's dialogue. And um, it's titled, Building Collaborative and Effective Food System Governance Frameworks in Kisumu County. Um, so for today's program, uh, we have quite a rich program and it, um, and it will involve officially opening the dialogue, giving an overview of the African City Food Exchange 2021, as well as the UN Food System Summit. And then we'll have sessions where we are setting the scene, um, getting to understand what the Kisumu food system, um, food system is like, as well as what are the current governance frameworks and visions are for the Kisumu uh, food system. So we'll have um, virtual breakout rooms and discussions and then reporting back to plenary. And then after all this, I will have reflections and actions as well as commitments after the UN Food System Summit. And all this uh, will be closed off and hopefully we'll um, complete our program by, by 5 p.m. And some of our speakers today, I uh, will have um, representatives from ICLI Africa. I will have uh, representatives from FAO Kenya. Um, We'll have also have Professor George Onyango uh, from Maseno University, uh, Mr. Nixon Samba, um, who will uh, be officially opening a dialogue, um, as well as um, who is a representative of the Flag Steering Committee as well. And then we'll have um, officials uh, from the Department of Agriculture, Irrigation, Livestock and Fisheries, um, who will be um, also presenting on the Kisumu vision, as well as commitments uh, for the UN Food System Summit. And um, to get to this point, um, it has been quite a journey, and we'd like to acknowledge our partners um, for, for, for organizing this dialogue. Um, first of all, uh, we'd like to acknowledge our partners, uh, the FAO, uh, both FAO Global and FAO Kenya. I uh, would like to acknowledge um, the, the conveners of the dialogue, the Kisumu County, and then we'd like to also acknowledge the, the great support from the Flag Steering Committee, as well as the Kisumu Local Inter Interaction Platform Trust. Uh, you're all welcome to the dialogue and has been made possible uh, by the generous contribution um, of the time as well as resources uh, from our partners. Um, so before we go on, um, I would like to give a background of this exchange and then as well as welcome you and let you know uh, why we are having this dialogue and what the focus is about and also contextualize it. So as I introduced myself earlier, I'm with ICLI Africa, and we are a network organization of over 1,750 local governments, uh, both globally and regionally. So in Africa, we have um, over 250 project cities, and we support local governments with sustainable sustainability planning across a key, key thematic areas such as climate change, energy, biodiversity, um, urban food systems planning, circularity, and other systematic areas are for planning in for sustainability in the urban environment. Um, so this um, we, this program is part of the 2021 African City Food Exchange, whose main aim is to elevate the voices of African cities towards the UN Food System Summit, and it's generously supported by the FAO Food and Agriculture Organization, and together we'll be conducting dialogues in 16 African cities. And the main objectives of this is to highlight, first of all, the role that African local governments are playing in improving their food systems, to generate discussions and actions, as well as commitments from local governments on food systems reforms, as well as connect these dialogues with the national UN FSS process um, 
both at member state level, but then also at uh, regional and um, international level. And then importantly, we would like to achieve a lasting collaboration on urban food systems and strengthen uh, networks of learning between different cities. So um, this process is part of, um, of, a, larger, of a larger roadmap um, towards the UN Food System Summit. We are currently in phase one, where we're having the engagements um, across different cities, and these are ha happening in about 15 African cities, um, as they have been listed there. And then we'll have a, an African City Food Month campaign, which will happen in the month of July. So this will mark phase two of the program. And then this will feed into the, the UN Food Systems uh, Free Summit, and um, eventually it will all feed into the UN Food Systems Summit, uh, which will be held in September. But however, um, ICLI and partners would want to keep uh, the momentum around city food um, network and engagements active, and therefore we'll continue engagements across different platforms, for example, such as the FAO Green Cities Initiative, the Cities with Nature, the One Health Platform, and other platforms. Um, so I would like to link this strongly to the UNFSS action tracks, um, the discussions happening today. And these are really very high level, um, high, high level thematic areas uh, that are designed to address possible trade-offs uh, with other action tracks. And they help us to identify solutions that can deliver wider reaching benefits. And so we are organizing this, um, the discussions around five action tracks. One is to ensure access to safe and nutritious food for all, shift to sustainable consumption, boost nature positive production, advance equitable livelihoods, and then also build resilience to vulnerabilities, shocks and stresses. And so for our discussion group, uh, please rename yourself according to the action track of interest so that we can easily break you out into the different breakout rooms. For example, Solofina Nekesa, I would rename myself as Solofina Nekesa and then uh, with an AT1 to show that I'm interested for in participating in action track one. So at this uh, juncture, I would like to um, I'd like to to welcome uh, Mr. Nixon Samba, who will be um, speaking on behalf of uh, Mr. Gilchrist um, Okum, and to re officially open the dialogue and then to invite in all our different stakeholders today um, into this discussion. I welcome uh, Mr. Samba. Thank you. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me, everyone? Yes, we can hear you. Do we give glory to His Almighty for giving us this chance? And uh, for those who, my name is Samba Nixon Otieno. I'm the co-chair of the the food advisory. A group in Kisumu, a project supported by FAO. And I want to take this opportunity. Apologies from uh, uh, Honorable Gilchrist Tukum, the Minister for. This meeting was very important for him, but unfortunately, due to logistical challenges and emergencies that arose last minute, he is unable to join us physically. But actually, he is with us and we have his blessings. And I want to take this chance, therefore, to welcome all of us and just to remind you that. Um, uh, the county government of Kisumu and the city of Kisumu as an entity is very keen on uh, this discussion and the deliberations that will come out of it. And therefore, we are going to encourage all of us to give their best and discuss freely. The issue of urban food systems is now a global attention, taking into account that um, it is projected that over the next uh, by the year 2050, 70% of the global population will be living in urban areas. Now, city of Kisumu within the county of Kisumu is one of the fastest urban, um, um, grow, fastest growing urban centers in Africa. 
Currently, we are the third largest um, urban settlement in the Republic of Kenya after Nairobi and Mombasa. And uh, we are having a population of about 1 million people, which we anticipate over the next, uh, by the year 2030, will grow exponentially by 20%. And therefore, it, it, it gives us a challenge as uh, people in policy. Uh, how are we going to feed uh, the populations as they come into our cities? And therefore, uh, I really want to give a challenge to all of us that we are the team that is now charged with the responsibility of defining the way we are going to feed our people by establishing strong food systems targeting urban areas. And I must uh, register my uh, sincere appreciation for ICLEI Africa for including Kisumu in this conversation. Uh, Kisumu being one of the greatest um, uh, urban setups within the Great Lakes region. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to take this opportunity on behalf of the County Executive, uh, Honorable Gil Christopoum, to officially open this session for the next two hours or so. And we are hoping that the conversations from today are going to form a platform for a continuous engagement until we are able to sustainably establish a stronger food urban systems uh, in the region. So on behalf of uh, the Honorable Minister, I want to welcome all of us for this engagement and may the good Lord bless our deliberations. Thank you very much, um, Solofina. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Samba, for that uh, very strong opening. And I think to us, this is an encouragement that we have the platform uh, to move our discussions forward. You have the ear of the county and then you have the ear of, of different stakeholders present, FA1, EP. So please be open in the, in the discussions, be active in the chat, be active in the the different commitments and the different solutions that we're going to engage on so that um, moving forward, uh, the city has some tangible points to move forward with and we have some tangible actions and commitments um, that, we can, um, that we can share with, uh, with the UN Food Systems um, Summit platform. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Samba, for that. And, um, and moving on, I would like to, um, to invite um, Mr. Hamisi Williams, who is the Assistant FO Representative Kenya, and head of program. Um, as you know, FAO have been um, our and very strong partners um, of our dialogue and the other dialogues that we are hosting, and would like to hear uh, from them. Um, welcome, Mr. Mr. Hamisi. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the convener. Thank you, Kisumu County and uh, the representative of uh, the CEC Kisumu who just uh, opened the meeting for us. And I wanna start from the onset by saying that uh, as FAO family and as the UN family, uh, we believe that this is the right place to be at this time. And we are also believing that we are also doing the right thing. So we are on the side of history with this for being in the right place at the right time and doing the right thing. And I would speak to a particular concept on the Food Systems Summit, trying to connect where as the UN family we are coming from and where now we are with the dialogue and where we want to go with the dialogue. And then I highlight a little of how we think this is important and uh, encourage all of us to actively participate in this dialogue now and even in the future after the dialogue itself is gone because the matters food systems has been here with us, will be here with us even in the future. So it is a process that we wanna look at in the prism of uh, city to global level. How do we start from all the way in Kisumu next to Lake Victoria, and eventually end the dialogue at the global level where all the countries and stakeholders will be gathering to have a conversation. So this year, colleagues, uh, 2021 is a very special year for us in the UN family 
because our United Nations Secretary General uh, issued a statement that convened effectively the Food Systems Summit as part of the decade of action to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. You realize that we have about 10 years to go and therefore every responsible organization like the United Nations and its agencies, we have to find ways and means of doing what it takes to achieve the goals and their specific targets within the remaining nine years. And this is why the food systems dialogue becomes one such step that is necessary to accelerate uh, this particular process. The summit <clears throat> will be looking to awaken the world to the fact that we all must work together to transform the way the world produces, consumes, and thinks about food. And therefore it becomes a very critical summit because when you bring in the idea of dialogue, we wanna have this, even from Kisumu itself, how do we consume, how do we produce, and how do we manage matters food? So at the end of the day, we'll be guided by five action tracks. The summit will then bring together, which then brings together key players uh, from the world of science, business, policy, healthcare, and academia, as well as farmers, indigenous people, and the youth organizations, including consumer groups, environmental activists, and other key stakeholders. And that is why colleagues, I was saying, we are in the right room for this particular summit and this particular part of the summit dialogue this afternoon. Whichever part of the world the dialogue is happening, Kisumu included, we are looking to deliver the following outcomes at the end of the day when the summit will be done eventually later this year. Generate significant action and measurable progress towards the 2030 agenda for sustainable development goals. As I had said earlier, you know, we only have 10 years to go. Raise awareness and elevate public discussion about how reforming our food system can help us all to achieve the SDGs by implementing reforms that are good for people and our planet up. Develop principles to guide governments and other stakeholders looking to leverage their food systems to support the SDGs. And finally, but not least, create a system of follow-up and review to ensure that the summit's outcome continue to drive new actions and progress, even in the future, because we don't want the summit to be an end into itself. It can't be. It is not, it will never be. The summit is opening for us so that we keep the dialogue alive. We keep those concerns about food systems alive and be able to find solutions to them now and in the future. And therefore, there is a plan towards the summit. And this plan is looking at having successful series of pre-summit dialogues which include independent dialogues which feed into the national dialogue, which are already scheduled. And uh, from the independent dialogue here, we will offer an opportunity for local communities to learn from each other, form new partnerships and explore important challenges facing the local food systems. Then independent dialogues will also bring together stakeholders from different uh, uh, food system sectors, health, agriculture, trade, environment, private sector, among others, to discuss issues that also affect the local food systems and deliberate and come up with the actionable ideas that can transform and result in sustainable food systems. So colleagues, we're saying that matters food systems can't just start at the global level and end there. Actually, they shouldn't even start at the global level. Matters food systems really are local matters because food really is also a local matter. So we're gonna have to start the dialogue at the local level where it matters, where the rubber meets the road, where consumption takes place. That is why we're looking into having a series of these dialogues. The one we are doing this afternoon being one of it. So it starts from there. 
is a bottom-up approach. FAO, in partnership with the ICLA, acknowledges the unique structure of Kisumu County, in it having a city within a county that also has a rural side. Now, that is a very unique one. As such, the support comes in for Kisumu to discuss these dynamics, especially on governance of the food systems. The interactions between the city and the rural surroundings of the county brings about dynamics in the food system that this dialogue that we are having will therefore shed light on and uh, discuss towards transformation and building of resilient food systems, a process that Kisumu is actively already engaged on currently with the urban food system project that FAO is supporting Kisumu and Nairobi on. And I think building from that is why we're becoming very trusted partners with Kisumu County and the entire Lake Region economic block uh, in some of these aspects here, including the food systems uh, conversations. So these independent dialogues therefore come in at the right time the discussions of this independent dialogue will be linked to various UNFSS action tracks, and this will be aired at the regional dialogue as the voice of the cities, the urban food systems component, and scaled up during the national dialogue. As FAO, we commit to continue to support Kisumu County in this transformation towards an inclusive, resilient, and sustainable food system through the various ongoing FAO projects in the county such as the one I just mentioned, the urban food system project, which will then support in strengthening of the food system governance through a food system strategy uh, uh, together that we're doing with the Lake Region. Establish an aquaculture multi stakeholder platform also for investment and dialogues. So ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon, if you look at uh, the implementation modality that the UN has uh, uh, adopted in uh, towards the Food Systems Summit is that let's start the conversation where it matters most, where consumption takes place, where food is produced. And that is why the initial conversations, including the Kisumu Food Systems Dialogue, become very critical. They are the ones that are going to feed into the national dialogue and eventually national dialogues all over the world will be feeding into the global Food Systems Summit. And allow me to end it there this afternoon and encourage all of us to actively participate and interact and engage so that we get the best out of this summit in the next one or two hours. Over to you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hamisi, for that. And, um, and during, your, um, during your speech, you really bring out um, very important issues. You remind us that this is the beginning of the decade of action. And you know, we have almost um, under nine years to be able to, um, to deliver on, on, on some of the, of, of, of the key, um, of the key um, targets of the, of the sustainable development goals. And I think bringing us back to, to, this particular, to this particular dialogue, we want this to be a very much action-oriented dialogue where we are uh, discussing actionable ideas, as you noted, as, that can sustain and transform the food system. So during our discussions today, uh, please let us be oriented towards actions, towards solutions that can drive transformation of the, of the food system. And particularly Kisumu noted, um, the interest of looking at governance as, um, as, as, as one of the key governance frameworks, as one of the, of, of, of the, of, of the frameworks that can change or transform the food systems at different levels. So thank you very much for that and for reminding us of why this dialogue is important and why we need to be extremely ambitious um, during our discourse. So, so we've, we've, we've had the introduction and right now we want to move into Kisumu, sort of understanding what the Kisumu food system is about, understanding um, as Dr. as Professor Unyango called it, how food flows in Kisumu. And then uh, from there, we'll move, um, we'll move to the level of understanding uh, what the, the food vision is for Kisumu, as well as what are the different governance frameworks um, around food um, in Kisumu. And then this will eventually guide um, our, our discussions later on in the discussion groups after having this overarching idea of, um, of what the food systems environment is like um, in Kisumu County. So at this juncture, I'd like to, to invite our professor, Professor Nyango, who will uh, take us through the introduction. 
uh, of how food flows in Kisumu. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Um, what I want to share with us is basically what we have been doing in the flag in Kisumu. It's a, a study that has been sponsored by FAO as part of our activities of building the food uh, liaison and advisory group in Kisumu. And uh, we are doing a rapid urban food systems appraisal. So I just want to share some preliminary uh, issues here to elicit discussions that we can be able to improve on this particular activity that we are undertaking. Now, um, basically the rapid food appraisal uh, was looking at two things, looking at the linkages uh, and food flows within the county, as well as linkages and food flows with cities and towns uh, outside the county, so that we see how Kisumu relates to the region. And then we also identifying the challenges of addressing the food flows and uh, the scope of improving this food flow situation. So that's basically the framework within which we are making this particular presentation. Uh, of course, Kisumu is a uh, a city of about slightly above half a million people in a county with about 1 million people. So Kisumu city actually has more than 50% of the population in the county. And that is very critical in terms of understanding the food flows and dynamics within the county. But it also has a very high poverty level of about 48% and 13% of the population was actually un unemployed pre-COVID. So with the COVID in the last one year or so, these figures actually gone up. Of course, we don't have the actual figures, but there are a number of people have actually lost their employment. And then agricultural income for most households is about 55% within the county. Um, these are the urban centers within the Kisumu County. And that we thought was important because uh, the urban centers are basically areas of consumption. But if you look at this map, uh, this is Kisumu County, and this is the center of the consumption of this, this particular county. Most of the foods that come into Kisumu County end up within the city, feeding uh, half a million people who do not engage in agriculture. Uh, so basically, what one notes is that Kisumu City is deficient in food production and is a net importer. But when we say Kisumu City, sometimes it also goes beyond Kisumu City and into Kisumu County. Quite a number of areas within Kisumu County are also net importers of food from other counties within the region and even beyond uh, Kenya. Uh, the other thing is that we have formal and informal systems for food uh, systems in Kisumu. And this work in consort so that you have the informal sector and the formal sector working in parallel to create a comprehensive food system that works within the city. And that is very important to appreciate because uh, if you're going to develop interventions, the interventions must appreciate the informality and the formality and how these uh, two aspects link up. Then we were uh, beginning to do a mapping of the variety of crops that we have within Kisumo County. Uh, so we look at whether they're irrigated uh, crops or we have uh, natural vegetation or rain fed crops or shrubs and scattered vegetation and so on, because that determines where you can be able to actually produce food. Uh, if you notice that most of the areas to the north east of the county is engaging in uh, sugarcane production, which is more of a commercial activity. Then the other areas within the county are actually engaged in production of uh, food crops. And quite a big area of the county also has swamps that yes, people engage in uh, rice production, but sometimes the rainy season then creates a lot of flooding and some of the crop is then lost. And those are things that we need to also be able to appreciate. Uh, so just to give an example, uh, we have different governance systems of foods and the governance systems range from the rural farmers or uh, peri-urban farmers targeting the urban uh, markets. So you can have the informal systems that link the rural farmers to the local retail traders, 
but sometimes they go through middlemen uh, who then either sell directly to the urban retail traders or they sell to wholesalers. But the supermarkets are also playing their role in terms of uh, providing access to some of these food in the uh, food uh, systems. Then you look at the transport network. We have the main highway that comes from Nairobi going through Kisumu to Busia and also going to Bondo and links up to the A1 going to Kakamega and all the way up to the north into South Sudan. And then we also have an international airport and we have a lake port. Now this transport uh, network is very critical in terms of how food then gets into Kisumu County uh, through Kisumu City either by air for some specialized kinds of goods or by water for some goods that are coming from our neighboring countries or by road, which is the main mode of transport of foods into the system. Then they get into the local transport networks that takes them into the markets in the place. So how do the food systems then work? Um, we have the production uh, stage, and then this goes right through the processing and distribution and into the retail. The retail, of course, creates waste systems, and sometimes the processing and the distribution also creates waste. And this waste has been a major challenge in Kisumu City in terms of managing it. Uh, so there are different interventions that are looking at how to manage uh, bio-waste. Then you also have food preparation, whether it's in the hotels, restaurant, or at the home level for purposes of consumption. So this gives a, an overview of how the food system works within the city. So we are also mapping the markets that we have within the city and eventually within the, the county. Uh, it's important because these markets are the main uh, distribution points for the foods that come from outside the city. And so we want to see eventually how these particular foods flow into the city through these formal systems, the formal markets, or through the informal systems, the village or roadside markets, and so on. That will give us an idea about how we can address and develop a strategy for a resilient urban food system. Just to give an example of the value chains, so we have, for example, a value chain for the fresh fruits. Uh, we notice that we don't just have fruits coming from around the county, but also from even outside uh, Kenya, like uh, quite a number of fruits come from South Africa and Egypt, like grapes and uh, apples and so on. Then we have people who are around here also growing commercial fruits. And then you also have smallholder fruit growers who eventually either they go through the mobile vendors or they grow through the formal systems or they go through the informal systems, uh, which are not processing or we go through a processing system that eventually still ends up in the, in the market. So we have all these different pathways that the foods follow using, using these particular examples. And so this particular study addresses how this movement of our food is within the value chain and how then we can be able to develop interventions at different, strategy, at different stages to ensure that we have a sustainable urban food system. So that basically was just to give you a, a global picture of what it is that we are doing so that we can begin the bigger discussion. A number of interventions have been undertaken in Kisumu and a, a number of studies have been undertaken in Kisumu. And FLAG is just one such uh, outfit that enables us to group like-minded organizations and institutions together to be able to drive this process of developing an urban food strategy. I mentioned there that I, I was working on a project called SPADE. So SPADE has also been working with the FLAG team in terms of building capacities for purposes of planning and agribusiness development. So that is what I wanted to share with you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Professor Nyango, for that overview of, um, of our food flows through Kisumu. And I think, Mbona, to you, you highlight um, one thing that came out strongly during our earlier discussion is really the over-dependence of, of the Kisumu food system on external factors um, in order to access its food. So in that way, you know, um, Kisumu is very open to, to vulnerabilities or to shocks and stresses. Um, and more recently, I think this was expressed in the, in the COVID-19 pandemic and then the associated uh, lockdown regulations, which really affected um, access to food, uh, pushed up food prices locally, um, and then also um, really affected livelihoods. So I think giving us that larger picture, um, I'm sure and confident will guide us in our discussions um, across the different um, action tracks 
uh, putting in mind that as a, as a county or city that is dependent on a lot of external factors to access food, how can we work with those factors to be able to um, to improve resilience uh, locally? So thank you um, very much for that. Um, so I would like to um, to invite um, Mr. Samba again uh, from the Flag Steering Committee, who will look at um, what collaborative governance looks like uh, within the county. And, and, and how far um, the city, the county, and different stakeholders have been working together so far um, to work on collaborative governance. Uh, welcome, Mr. Samba. Thank you, Celestina. Uh, let me try to share my screen. Uh, we're getting some reflection uh, from you. Uh, it's possible to resolve that. I'm trying to uh, do this way possible. Say, okay. Currently, yes, yes, we are fine. Now. I don't know whether I've done a lot of colors. I was trying to look more young by doing so many colors. It's communicating the message. We get it. Uh, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you again, uh, Solofina, for this opportunity. Um, no offense using the red color. I know in some places in Africa, using red color, especially, is not allowed in some areas. But nonetheless, I want us to take the next few minutes to reflect on uh, the importance of collaborative food system governance. And I want to contextualize to what has been happening in the city of Kisumu. So for those who are joining me now, I am the co-chair of the FAO project in Kisumu. My chairman, who is the Honorable Minister for Agriculture, Mr. Gil Christokom, is unable to join us. But then there are, there are key terminologies in, uh, in, 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 my, in my topic that I really want to bring to your attention. And the key terminologies here is the word collaborative, the word food system, and the word governance. And a lot of us are probably asking, what is a food system? I didn't want to go to the academic definition. I wanted to go to the... Uh, uh layman's definition of what a food system is and most of us are defining it uh, it's the sum total of all actors that interact along a food value chain so we are talking from production transport processing retail wholesale and preparation and it doesn't end there it ends at where now we are handling the waste associated with food but then the other critical component is now the policy environment and the cultural norms around food. This is what entirely makes a food system. Now, today it is transitioning into diets, sustainable resource utilization, and social inclusion. So we cannot talk about food system without really looking at policy issues, cultural issues, and nutrition. And of course, all the factors, if you look at uh, this is how a typical food system would look like. So we are talking about, we're talking about sustainable food systems. We are talking about policy issues, social issues, economic issues, environment, and biophysical. And all those factors, of, all those components, all those activities involved in food handling and production are all there. So how, the question is, how do we make this? How do we bring all the, uh, uh, the, the players? These are different actors. How do we work in close collaboration? So the next thing somebody would ask me, what is food governance? Now, within the context of food system, I want to define food governance as a mechanism that facilitates dialogue, you know, convergence of views, people coming together and coordinating actions to improve food security, both at local, and I really wanted to say also at household level, because then regional, national, and of course at the global level. 
So food governance should be looked at at, at, at that at, at those steps that we need to discuss. We need to encourage dialogue at local, regional, national, and global level. So it should be problem driven, but it must be context specific and people centric. It means that the people must be part of this. Now, uh, if you use uh, pictures, this is what essentially a food governance is a, is, is, is a, is a multi-connected system between the market, the state, and of course the society. We all need all these people in this dialogue. We cannot have a food governance uh, system if we do not bring in all these key players. That is the state, which is which represent the government, then the market, which is now the supply and demand, and of course now the civil society. Now, having said that, uh, I want to bring to your attention that uh, FAO uh, is supporting the county government of Kisumu in food systems planning as part of a project called Integrated Actions for Innovative Food Systems uh, Actions in uh, across rural and urban communities. That's a project that is being run by FAO. And the project aims to support decision makers in food planning, in food system planning for cities to contribute to improved food security. So this is an initiative that was started in 2019 and it gave birth to an institution nowadays we call, of course, the expected outcomes of this project are essentially to establish a basis for significant contribution to food security and nutrition at local levels. So this can only be achieved through stakeholder participation we are coming to the realization that the issue of food is not a, it's not a function of government, but it's a function of both the community and government in when they engage in meaningful conversations. Now, it is this project that gave birth to an institution called, uh, it's, it's a quasi-institution, it's not legal, uh, called the Food Liaison Advisory, uh, known on the streets as FLAG, now, FLAG is essentially a multi-stakeholder platform that uh, brings together all the diverse interests and the needs of food system stakeholders, and they represent the various components of food system in Kisumu as a city and also as a county. Uh, so essentially, FLAG serves a framework where opportunities and challenges uh, facing the uh, that are present in the food in the sustainable food system in Kisumu. It presents a platform where we are able to discuss uh, and appropriate strategies are identified, planned, and monitored in a collaborative manner where the state members of the state and the government and members of the community come together. Now, this was founded in 2019, as I mentioned earlier. And somebody is probably now asking, what is the mandate? A uh, mandate of FAO. A flag is on uh, food governance and planning mechanisms uh, that are in the in the rural and urban areas that we are aiming to build consensus among all the stakeholders. We are also looking at generating knowledge based on both qualitative and quantitative data. And uh, Professor GMO has given you a glimpse of. Uh, uh, what it is in terms of data that has been generated. And then we are looking at innovation. How do we now integrate innovation into our food systems? How do we leverage technology, for instance, in strengthening our food systems? So we are trying to uh, I promote and pilot some of the innovations on strengthening the food band systems. And of course, we are not wanting to act alone. We want to align ourselves to the global initiatives and make sure that uh, we are at par regionally and globally. Now, FLAG has certain principles, and that is that everybody in the meeting is equal. So even when Waziri is seated there, his point is as important as the point given by the farmer. So nobody is stronger than the other person. And uh, all our flag members are committed to timely and meaningful participation. We respect 
We have respect for experience and cultural and religious differences because flag is composed of different people from different cultures and from different religious uh, backgrounds, taking into account that food has a very strong religious orientation. And then we are always attentive and we, 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 all decisions are, uh, are implemented based on consensus building. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, membership obligation, uh, members, we don't pay them. Actually, they contribute to support the operations of flag either by donating personnel or do donating technical resources or financial resources. So those are some of the obligations of our members. Uh, they also participate and promote activities of, uh, uh, of, of the flag. They are also able to identify other stakeholders whom we are not able to reach. And they're also very critical in mobilizing resources for the operations of, uh, of uh, FLAG. And most importantly, they approve the work plans and uh, provide the oversight role. And this is done through participation in the annual meetings that are held frequently. Now, how is the leadership of FLAG centered. The chairperson at, of FLAG is the county executive member for agriculture for the time being. And uh, he will be, he is supported by a co-chair who is a community representative. So this is, this brings in community, active community participation in the leadership of FLAG. And we also have a secretariat that is headed by the flag coordinator, I mean the FAO project coordinator, and who is also an officer of the county government of Kisumu. Now membership is voluntary. We don't force people to stay with us. So if you want to leave, you give us a one month notice. And it is membership is open to individuals, the registered entities and institutions. And before we onboard you as a member, you must sign a commitment letter that also outlines the TORs of flag. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what has been the outcome of this collaboration? As we speak today, ladies and gentlemen, through this collaboration, we have been able to recruit 70 different stakeholders spanning through various departments of the county government of Kisumu, that is agriculture, health, trade, environment, urban planning. But we have also we are we are we are also blessed with members from research organizations, uh, stakeholders from the academia, stakeholders from uh, the civil society, stakeholders from the UN agencies and other and other uh, development partners, faith-based organizations, regu state regulators, and other state agencies, and essentially the business community who are the who are also members of the private sector. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you understand, all these stakeholders are um, integrated into the operations and the, the decision making organs of um, FLAG and essentially highlighting the importance of making food security, the fight for ensuring strengthening urban food system, a, collab, a collective responsibility of the people, of the community and of government. Thank you very much uh, for listening. Uh, back to you, Solofina. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Samba for that and for, and for sharing with us what really FLAG, um, what really FLAG is all about. I think in your description, when you look at governance as the mechanism that facilitates debate, convergence of views and coordination, and then you come to us and then you show us what the composition of flag is, you know, to me, it represents that place of convergence, you know, where you have different stakeholders coming together and working at uh, different levels to be able to, um, um, to move towards a common goal, which is ensuring um, access to food or ensuring food security um, within Kisumu. So thank you for sharing the structure for flag, and we hope that um, is membership open. I did not ask about that. Can different stakeholders um, join flag? 
Oh, definitely. That is the essence about this. We want uh, as varied uh, stakeholders. We, we are looking at a professional mix. So individuals, oh. you are allowed to join us. Registered institutions, entities, representative of government, civil society organizations. Everybody has an idea or two about food. And that mm -hmm. is why we welcome everybody on board. Sure. And uh, maybe um, stakeholders present that are not part of LAG, uh, please do reach out to Mr. Samba um, and you can chat our way forward on this. Uh, we've got some interesting questions coming in in the chat, uh, particularly for you, uh, Professor Nyam Onyango. Um, so one question goes, um, thank you for your risk. Um, I think it was um, a question and it was says, um, let me first go to it right now. If would you uh, please, would you please respond to it or um, so that we can all hear what um, what the question was and then what the response was so that we can all benefit um, from from that response. Thank you. I think um, Denise uh, asked a question about waste production and wanted to know how we are addressing the issue of waste, how you define what waste is and uh, food production itself is also, also produces biological waste. And of course, she's addressing the figure that we presented showing the food chain. So in the form of plant residues and so on. And this is what is referred to as waste. Uh, so the question is, how do we address this? Because waste management, is it a sustainable uh, intervention? And I think if you look at the, the value chain, there's waste production at different points, right from production until you end up in the stage of consumption, the value chain. And each stage has waste production. Waste, of course, is defined based on the user. For one person, it might be waste. For somebody else, it's an input. So our strategies, we're developing our strategies. How do we address some of this, what is considered as waste, to be an input into other activities so that the food uh, value chain also creates uh, sub activities along it that could also create employment. I think I know in a hero, they use rice husks to make uh, materials for sealing, like they're like soft board and so on. I know you can also be able to use the bio waste to make briquettes. You can also be able to use them to make fertilizer. In Kibuya market, they're actually making the fertilizers. They got certification by Kenya Bureau of Standards for their fertilizers and so on. So there's a whole lot of stuff that people can be able to do in terms of converting that waste into productive stuff that can be brought back into the food value chain that can then also be improved the productivity and so on. So it's a whole uh, system of things that we shall be able to address once we finish this particular study and we develop the urban food strategy for Kisumo County. Um, thank you so much for that. Uh, Denise, does that uh, respond to your, to your question? Yes, thank you very much. I wanted to bring forward the sustainability issue with regards to waste and he is addressing it. Thanks. So um, that's good to know. Um, colleagues, do we have uh, one more question before we can go into our breakout rooms? Please raise your hand um, and then unmute yourself so that you can, you can raise your question. Now maybe you can raise this in the chat. Okay, um, so as we, I think this is going to be the, the, the most exciting part of the dialogue uh, where we really lead you to, to, to interact with your colleagues. And um, so really we're going to break out into uh, different discussion rooms, uh, which we're calling breakout rooms um, under the different action tracks. So as I noted earlier, please rename yourself um, according to the action track that you're interested in or uh, drop your name in the chat and then my colleague Daniel will rename you um, accordingly. And then also Sine will be um, putting all of us into breakout rooms so that we can have um, specific discussions. So for the facilitators, um, Daniel will share the link, um, the link of the document into the chat. And this is where you capture 
to capture all um, all the different um, inputs. So action track one, it's about access to safe and nutritious food for all. Action track two is a shift to sustainable consumption patterns. Action track three is boost nature positive production. Action track four is advance equitable livelihoods. And action track five is a build resilience to vulnerabilities, shocks and stress. So please rename yourself according to these action tracks. And then you'll be broken out into, um, into separate rooms with like-minded individuals who would want to, um, who want to discuss uh, based on um, two questions. Um, so one, question one is um, what instrumental policies, incentive mechanism and initiatives can be, can be adopted to spur systematic transformation of Kisumu's food system? And this um, could be related to finance, technology and innovations, infrastructure, collaborations, uh, policies, as noted earlier, incentives, institutions, as well as um, social initiatives. And then question two will be, who are the key food system transformation stakeholders and what are their requirements or needs in order to drive food system transformation? So I'll post uh, these two questions in the chat, but then you will also be, um, they will be in the individual, they will be in the individual uh, breakout rooms. Um, do we have any questions on the process? We do have a minute just to 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 share any questions, any concerns. And then in the meantime, Snetemba is um is 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 grouping you all according to different breakout rooms where you'll have discussion. Please use this as a networking opportunity, get to know who is in the room with you, um, and then also get to have um, really deep discussions around the issues um, around the issues brought up. And then if you feel in your discussions, um, some of the key questions are missing, what are some of those um, questions that you would want answers to um, in later dialogues or in later discussions, please also bring this up um, as, we, um, as we prepare for further dialogues. Um, how are we doing with the breakout rooms? Um, I'm still assigning. All right. Thank you. So if you have not been able to rename yourself, and then we'll um, will assign you to different action tracks. Uh, but please, if you'd want to rename yourself or if you want to indicate what action track you're interested in, uh, please drop your name in the chat. Are we all doing fine? Uh, can I get an indication that I'm not, I'm not alone? Yeah, no. All right, thank you. I have quite a few people who haven't changed their names. Um, Daniel, I'm not sure if you're working on renaming some of the participants. Uh, so I'll suggest that what will happen is uh, people will just be renamed randomly if you have not been able to rename yourself or Okay, if I'm able to read through the screen and then I'll do that for you. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that solo from my hand there. Yeah? All right. Because I'm not a host. Fine. That's fine. Then Sne, um, allocate, um, ensure that each, each participant is allocated to a breakout room and then okay. um, the conversations will start from there. Okay. All right, if you do have any questions, please use the chat function or unmute yourself and then um, ask um, the different uh, presenters or um, any participant on the call.
right, so Daniel will share the breakout template. Um, and then we'll, uh, for each room, there'll be one facilitator as well as a one, um, one facilitator and then one repertoire for, for each group. Um, Solo, can I just double check with you? How will I see if everyone has been allocated to a group? Because I think I'm done with that. All right. So then break out the room, and then we'll all um, we'll all be pushed to the different rooms. All right. Um, first, uh, just a moment. Daniel will share in the chat the link to the to the Google document, um, which will be used as our template um, to capture the, our our inputs. So we're all ready um, for our breakout discussion rooms. All right, welcome back. Um, are we all here? I hope we didn't lose um, anyone along the way. Um, I think, how, how were the discussion rooms? Uh, please please um, type your response in the chat so that I get an idea of, of, of how the discussions were. Did you get to know who you were with in the room and how were your discussions? Please type your responses in the chat and um, I'll not move on till I get at least one response. How were the discussions and did you get to meet, um, did you get to, um, to interact with, with, with all the participants in the chat? I mean, in the same discussion room. So Daniel says they're interested in assimilating. Okay, um, so now this is the time we get to hear um, what was happening in the discussion rooms. And I think uh, from, um, from the different presenters will know um, what was going on or what, what have been some of the outcomes of your discussion, whether they've been interesting and stimulating, whether we've been able to, um, um, to, to, to look at certain uh, different solutions that we can work with um, in transforming the food system. So we'll know from, uh, from our presenters. Uh, Lorraine says informative, some good work happening on the ground and the need to support and up um, and upscaling. Um, thanks Lorraine for that comment. Um, so I think now I'll hand over to, to action track one um, to report back um, on what the discussions were about and what were some of the outcomes of this. Thank you. Uh, Professor, Professor Nyango, that was your group. Yeah, Susan is presenting. All right, um, thank you. Susan, the, the virtual floor is yours. Yes, sorry. Sorry for that delay. I think my, my computer hung for a while. Yeah, so we had a very interesting discussion as as uh, as group one we were not able to finish because um <laughs> it was interesting so i'm presenting on behalf of my colleagues emmanuel uh professor uh, myself and uh, i'm sorry i don't remember the other person but we were four of us and so for the first question uh, about the the you know the first question we were only able to tackle four areas so we felt that uh, we need definitely we need a policy framework so that it provides an enabling environment to be able to you know address the issues around uh, access and safe safe access to safe and nutritious food. So we were proposing several policy framework and we came up with five of them. The first one was around contextualizing the national food and sec uh, nutrition security policy of 2012 and just looking at the Kisumu context and ensuring that we're able to address the key issues that affect us as Kisumu. Then the, we also felt that we needed a framework for urban agriculture to address all vulnerable groups uh, in the urban area of Kisumu to increase uh, food production in the city. Uh, alongside that, we also note that, uh, you know, the food system is not delivering for children, so we need to think of a strategy for school feeding programs, and also just uh, thinking around the social protection uh, initiatives 
to support um, vulnerable age cohorts. And we didn't limit this for ch to children. We also th thought of uh, the elderly men, uh, children zero to five years, middle-aged school-going children, and adolescents. Um, we also felt that we needed a policy to support grant access, especially to farming communities, and also just addressing the issue of food safety um, at, the, at that space uh, of policies. So of course, some of these things, are, these things are not standalone. Of course, they can be integrated, but um, this will provide an enabling uh, environment for strengthening the food system, especially around access and safe and nutritious food. So when we, look, when we talked of incentives and financing mechanisms, we felt that uh, the fiscal space for agriculture and nutrition needs to be expanded to include access to safe and nutritious food. And you are saying that 10% you know, of the budget should actually go to agriculture. Uh, and, in, and of course, uh, part of it needs to go to nutrition as well. Around the technology and the innovations, we note that in Kisumu, there's an innovation center to have a specific, uh, we are proposing that they have a specific uh, area that targets agriculture production um, technology, and also working very closely with the, uh, with the universities, you know, to develop knowledge around innovation and technology. So for social uh, initiatives, we felt there is a need for, you know, uh, creating awareness, especially on consuming uh, nutritious diets. So on the second question, we were not able to exhaust it fully, but we felt that the key food, uh, the, the key stakeholders are number one, the research institutions, because they would develop the infrastructure for food systems. Um, the food logisticians, so they need an enabling environment, and those are policies, infrastructure, and financing to avoid food wastage. Um, and then, of course, we have the agriculture extension workers in the agriculture sectors, and then we also have the UN bodies who are able to provide the communication linkage and knowledge sharing. Now, this list was not exhaustive because we are still brainstorming, but that is all we are able to do as a group. Thank you, Andover. Um, thank you very much, Susan. And you said there's, there wasn't enough time, but um, that, that, that the inputs that you that, that you've given us show that it was such a rich discussion. Um, thank you very much. So we've got to action track two um, to to present on on the outcomes. Um, Lorraine. <clears throat> Sorry, thank you so much, Solafina. I hope I can be able to communicate back to us what the rest of my, my team members raised. But if not, I am hoping for a recording of this so we can all um, uh, get everything, harvest everything that was said. So we were looking at a shift to sustainable consumption patterns. And uh, the question that we tackled was what instrument, uh, uh, be there policies, be there incentives, mechanisms, and initiatives could be adopted to spur systematic transformation of food systems within Kisumu. And there are several um, aspects that we raised. I think the rest of the things are, are the same for the rest of us. So what, we, what were the suggestions from our group uh, okay, where, where are my notes? My notes are, are right here. Some of the suggestions that we came up with, the first thing we were looking at policy makers, we agreed that they are no, uh, we don't yet have policies at our level, but we can actually borrow for, from what the national government has. But not just policies, we need policies that are inclined towards some of uh, some of these items that we are raising, like uh, food waste policies that would articulately address some of these problems that then we are we are having. Some of the things that we also some of the some of them uh, the other matter that was raised as we conversed about uh, sustainability, whether our consumption is sustainable, we were looking at creating awareness amongst the populace. We have certain stereotyping, we have certain beliefs, and we need to come up with a way to school the local people, either change perceptions and enable them to embrace certain food. 
uh, we looked at the issue of pricing. Uh, not many people can be able to afford and at, house, so at, at household levels, there's a lot of limitation because, because people cannot be able to afford. There are several studies that have been done on poor households. And so if, if our consumption is going to be sustainable, then we're going to look at some of the recommendations made from such studies. There were suggestions that we could have initiatives around pricing that then would enable people uh, enable people to to settle for certain kind of food that is actually nutritious not just be able to afford but be able to get food that that is safe and that has nutritious value one of, one of them we were looking at uh, or men really came out so well in our discussion is readily available in Kisumu, but certain people like the Kisumu men believe you don't serve a husband, your husband or men, yet it has a lot of nutritional value to it. So it's generally assumed that omena is in your plate because then you cannot afford fish. Those are some of the perceptions that we are suggesting uh, it can be changed. Uh, then because of poverty, even though there is fish in Kisumu, People would rather sell, the business is lucrative. So as a person, you don't consume, but then you sell. Uh, so we still have high levels of poverty uh, dictating what we eat and what is on our plate. We have indigenous vegetables and we looked at currently what FAO is doing through the, uh, together with the county government of Kisumu, uh, rallying the residents to start growing their own food because Kisumu is largely, um, a county that depends on food imports from other counties. So we're looking at uh, how the county is trying to educate communities and they come as communities to learn the technologies and they are now adopting those technologies. So we looked at politics, how then uh, uh, politics are affecting um, mm, sustainability of our consumption. And uh, we, we agreed that, that yes, politics dictates policies, but then we should not give up. We should find people that are willing to put forth policies that can turn around this, help us embrace innovations and uh, popularize the local. I don't like to call it local, but yes, local innovations. There, there are local uh, food innovations that we have that if we rally behind them, they can actually turn around. It is interesting to see that some of the interventions that we already have or are hoping to have in Kisumu is uh, companies coming together, moving away from China fish and actually enabling the locals to be able to afford fish. Right now we have a company that sells a kg of fish at 330 in Kisumu and this is very encouraging because then this makes it cheaper than red meat and but it's only sold on Friday but here yeah, we didn't have that so some of these interventions can actually be encouraged and we have the government uh, backing such companies so that then we can eat healthy um, we, let me, we need to have policies around uh, food waste. How do we manage food waste? Because uh, it will not be sustainable if we cannot be able to manage food waste. Some of the people that we thought in the second question should be brought on board to enable us experience change are research institutions. And we should embrace them and embrace their findings, work along with them. Policy makers are also key in uh, creating a change in this area. And then we have uh, um, stakeholders like in Kisumu, the fisher folk. When it comes to harvesting of fish, if we bring them on board and uh, ed educate them and let them know the importance of probably using certain types of nets and not others, we could actually be on our way to sustainable consumption. We ought to popularize um, innovations that are coming up. We quickly embrace innovations that are that are outside there. Like for now, what we are having is the instant porridge that is really a star in Kisumu. But then I believe there are other innovations that are local that can be supported. So we bring innovators uh, on board and we shall be on our way to having sustainable, experiencing sustainable consumption.
Yes, let me stop at that. Um, thank you, Lorraine, for representing our group very well. Um, I think you really did touch on, on the key points that we raised. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll hand over to, to Action Track 3. Uh, thanks, Solo, for that. Um, in my group, um, I had um, Professor Basio with me, Nixon also, as well as um, Franklin. And uh, we tried to emphasize um, nature-based solutions or nature-positive solutions, uh, how we can incorporate that into the food system in responding to the questions uh, that we uh, looked at. And so in terms of the first question um, about uh, instrumental policy, policies, uh, mechanisms, and initiatives that can be adopted to improve um, Kizumo's food system. And um, essentially, we, there was the notion that uh, producers uh, need to be uh, incentivized, and, and especially farmers, because um, there are some information that are not readily available for them to use. And so uh, there must be investment in making this information available for them. And then sometimes uh, they lack uh, probably the skills to grow their crops. And so there was the um, suggestion that demonstration plots can that can help farmers to secure knowledge on what they need and how to grow can be one of the things that should be done. And um, there is also a mention of the lack of finances for agriculture, and that this needs to be improved and um, innovative ways of financing needs to, or, or financing needs to be explored. And also there is a mention of um, human capacity issues, uh, which needs to be improved and uh, there was a suggestion that uh, the county needs to bring more technical people on board to, to be able to um, solve some of the, resolve some of these challenges that the county is going through. In terms of infrastructure, I think uh, uh, the group suggested <coughs> that that uh, policies yeah. that focuses on water harvesting can be introduced and uh, flood water control. In essence, uh, I think there was the emphasis on improving water facilities for agriculture and for other purposes uh, there. And one thing that came out strongly also was the fact that access to market for farmers is, is, is inadequate. And so uh, it has also, in a way, um, affected their ability to, to make a living from, from their produce. So, this needs to be strengthened as is well. There is, a, uh, there is an emphasis on strengthening access to market for farmers. And uh, the recommendation was that the county should take agriculture seriously. And uh, I think uh, they mentioned that before there used to be agricultural extension officers, uh, but this is now, I mean, they are not adequate anymore and that probably they, there is a phase out of this. And so uh, sh this should be brought back. That was what uh, we concluded in our group. And also, uh, finally, I think uh, my, my, my group also mentioned the fact that uh, when we talk about nature-based solutions to resolving uh, environmental challenges or challenges within the food system uh, that has environmental implications, that um, sometimes or most times there is lack of knowledge on what these solutions could be. And so there should be sensitization campaigns on the importance of these and how these can be done, such as um, trying to make farmers understand and acknowledge the importance of something like agroecology. It can be good to, to invest in such sensitization, sensitization campaigns and also distribution of pamphlets so that uh, uh, could be a, a major means of, 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 of sensitizing the public about how nature-based solutions or nature-positive production can be emphasized in the food system. In terms of the second question that uh, looks at the food system transformation stakeholders and what their requirements are in order to contribute uh, better towards food system transformation, uh, we identified farmers 
number one farmers, and that they are important and critical because they are those who produce our food. And so requirement for them are markets and capacity building. There must be investment in capacity building to build their capacity. And I think I've emphasized this before, the lack of um, enough extension officers. And number two, in terms of stakeholders are researchers. So sometimes uh, there, was, there is the notion that whereas the farmers may be visualizing what is needed, sometimes they are not able to articulate this. And so there must be a sort of collaboration between farmers and researchers so that they can, in a way, we are able to articulate what is needed or what the challenges are very well, such that we can be able to drive innovation. And thirdly, we emphasize uh, in terms of stakeholders, technical experts. And uh, I think there was this uh, talk about a lot of people shying away from studying agricultural related so subjects nowadays, that people don't want to study agriculture, they all really want to do something else. But that, that, is, that is actually dangerous for the country and for the Kisumu County that uh, there must be willingness and people, people should also be interested in studying agriculture and looking at issues around our food system. And um, another stakeholder that we felt is important is donors, uh, that they are important in, in terms of resources that they bring on board and in terms of ideas that they bring on board. However, for them to function effectively and for their effort to be impactful, they require good policies and systems to be put in place. So that is the requirement for donors. I mean, when donors are coming in, they want uh, a system that is working in terms of governance, in terms of government structure, in terms of institutional arrangements, and so this should be put in place, and in terms of policies also that can drive their effort and drive their work. Finally, we, in terms of stakeholders, we emphasize or highlighted the importance of civil society and the advocacy work that they do, and that there, there was this suggestion that uh, the CSOs must take a leading role in advocating for the rights of farmers, for the plight of farmers, and generally for the things that affect each and every one of us within the food system. And the mention was made of, of for instance, food prices and how, how that plays out. Uh, maybe the difference between what the farmer had and what the retailers or uh, food manufacturer eventually. And so those kind of issues must be highlighted by civil societies and they have a role to play in order to make our food system better. I think that is all from my group. Over to you, Solofina. Um, thank you very much, Daniel. Um, please, um, if you're in Daniel, the Daniel's group and you have additional points, uh, please use the chat function um, to add on to that. Um, so I'd like to invite um, Action Track 4 uh, to please uh, present on some of the outcomes from the discussion. Hello. Hello, Paul. Oh. I can hear you. Okay, fine. Thank you. Now, um, in the breakout room number four, we're talking about how to, how to advance equitable livelihoods. We have about uh, five of us in that group. Uh, <laughs> we had very interesting discussions, though, so the time was short. Initially, we I was able to put down some of the points that we discussed. On the first question, uh, an issue emerged about uh, when you talk about issues of equity, about youth and women, and what are their roles in the food market system, and that uh, there was an observation that the food system has not favored these two groups. That, that is in terms of access to productive resources and that in in many cases uh, women participate in production but at the marketing stage men take over and they're the ones who benefit from the system so that's an equity issue that requires some form of uh, social intervention also uh, there was a uh, an observation that uh, youth and women do not have access to productive resources, that is particularly land. And so they cannot even be able to access financing in the form of loans. They don't have security to get loans uh, 
from banks so they don't have access to land. The titles are held by the men. That's the way, mostly because of the cultural setup of, of this area. Secondly, the issue of uh, budget, uh, just to, there was a suggestion that uh, there should be some affirmative action in budgetary allocation to support agriculture, particularly uh, in enterprises owned by youth and women. And generally the agricultural sector was felt, there was a feeling that it is underfunded and there is need to allocate more fun, fun, funding for the agricultural sector, particularly targeting the youth who can then be able to create more opportunities for uh, employment. Uh, there was also an observation of uh, a bias against informal food traders. Like recently, there's been, there have been efforts to reorganize the city. And uh, so, but the, it's like it is driven by a futuristic city that uh, looks at cities as a place where people shop in malls and supermarkets. And so this uh, livelihoods that depend on informal, in the informal economy, uh, there is a feeling that they are feeling uh, like they are being uh, discriminated against in the reorganization process. Also, there is a, a feeling of a, a rural bias in national and local food policy that whatever their policies are being uh, mentioned, there is a bias towards uh, rural areas and urban areas are not included in the debates or in the policies regarding food production or food systems. So there is a, a need for a, a urban food policy particularly for a city like uh, Isumu. Uh, they also need, there was also discussions around incentives for producers, particularly if uh, subsidies could be uh, provided for, food, for uh, agricultural inputs to promote food production, as it is uh, right, has been rightfully said, that uh, Kisumu largely depends on food that is imported from other counties in Kenya or other countries uh, in the region and, 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 and in the continent. And even as we are told that some fish is even imported from China. So this need really incentivize uh, local production. Uh, on the issue of food waste, uh, there was an observation that a lot of food is lost after the post uh, harvest and the marketing stages. And so there is need for policy on uh, post harvest uh, food waste management so that then we can create a circular economy in the food system. There are also concerns about the safety of agri inputs that as we promote production, um, there is a need for us to have a policy on the use of agricultural inputs, particularly the chemicals and fertilizers that we are, that we are using for the safety of uh, the consumer, so that we just ensure that the food that is produced will eventually be safe for the consumer. On the second question, here we are looking at the stakeholders and what are their requirements. We gave it a systems approach so from production to consumption. And so uh, the food producers and farmers, uh, what they really require is incentives to be able to produce more because as it has been said earlier, the system is deficient in food production. And this can be done through subsidizing uh, inputs. Traders need to access both urban and regional markets actually particularly the informal traders. Yeah, there is a, a feeling that even if, as, as the production increases, they need to really facilitate traders to access markets in, in the urban areas. For distributors, the transport system is very key because for example, most of the food that reaches Kisumu, markets in Kisumu, uh, 
reach here via the road transport system. So there's need for an efficient system and also market information so that the distributors should be able to know what is required, where and when. Uh, for consumers, the, there is, they require some policy for healthy food consumption and to promote healthy consumption, not only through nutrition education, which we felt is necessary, yes, but also we need to enable access to healthy and nutritious foods. Yeah, I will stop there for now. Uh, thank you. If there are any other suggestions, you can have them in the chat box. Um, thank you very much, Paul, for representing um, your group. Um, please, group members, feel free to use the chat function to, to add any additional comments. Or if you have questions as well, I um, think this is the time to put this forward in the chat so that once we were trying to regroup, um, we can direct some of these questions to the different to the different action tracks. Um, so I'd like to invite um, action track five for, for their contribution. Thanks a lot. Um, so action track five uh, spoke to build resilience to vulnerabilities, shocks and stresses. Um, so I, I hope I articulate the points clearly here. If I'm missing anything, please do jump in for those who are part of our group. Um, so in terms of uh, like actions, um, we spoke about uh, consumer having a, a emergency food plan, but there's a need for um, that to be like re reviewed or revised and, and make sure that it can get implemented in situations like the pandemic that's recently happened um, because there has been responses like general difficulties in real time responses to food insecurities specifically around the pandemic and I'm sure um, other natural disasters as well um, and then another point was um, uh, as part of this is there's a need to build resilience in in networks or through networks and through stakeholders where uh, stakeholders have the opportunity to um, kind of share their knowledge around the different parts of the food systems to create awareness and advocacy um, for either processes that are undertaken or uh, ways to improve their business or the food flows and those kind of things. Um, and just general support around for each other um, as working collectively is almost more fruitful than working as an individual, um, especially with, for example, a community engaging with the local county. Um, and there's some good examples of some, some smaller towns that are doing some good work uh, and kind of leading the way in, in, in this regard. Uh, and then just in terms of from a financial point of view, there's, there is some concern around needing more access to funding. Um, for example, uh, there's, a, there's a need for, if you are asking for funding, having a land deed uh, is required as collateral and that's kind of making funding not accessible. So looking at other options, like for example, what was suggested was a revolving fund supported by the county so that makes finance flows um, easier and access, access to these flows better. Um, so there, there are obviously different mechanisms uh, around that. Um, and then another thing was around waste management. Um, so the county at the moment mostly focuses on collecting and, and kind of disposing of the waste. And there's a large discussion linked to food around how to better um, compost or using the manure around that for other opportunities. So, so creating kind of like a circular program um, that can be upskilled because apparently there are some people doing it on a on a smaller level, but uh, something like 65% of the waste is food waste. So they, that there is an opportunity to upscale there. So including that in maybe policy and, and kind of practice. Um, and, and then around that, there's also a need for, there was a lot of discussion around technology and, um, the need to up, uh, upgrade technology. Uh, so 
like uh, different markets um, are, for example, using things that are very rudimentary or very basic facilities for kind of cold storage facilities. And there, there, has, there does exist other technologies that are available, but the information of that is not accessible to the people on the ground or the people making use of these facilities. Um, so again, coming back to this idea of kind of upskilling um, people on the ground as well as uh, you know, making this information accessible through um, like a resource center or, or some sort of like platform of sharing. Uh, and then there was a discussion around extension officers. So they used to be quite active in the food space um, and the need for more of those kind of actors which connect um, technology and information uh, to both black farmers and suppliers and people working in the market to like uh, either news about um, potential diseases and those kind of things or um, also around technology and, and you know if, if there's a drought or there's a flood like how to better manage your um, like what what are other people doing knowledge sharing so that connecting both the either local government or the county to your farmers and your uh, suppliers on on that on that end. Um, so those are kind of the, the main action points that, that we discussed. Um, we didn't really identify kind of key stakeholders, um, but there are kind of stakeholders linked to all those different activities. Um, so yeah, that's kind of our discussion in brief. Um, thank you very much, Lorraine, for that. And um, and really, right now we've heard from our five action tracks and um, and some of the key points coming out of the discussion. So I'd like to um, to open the the virtual floor. Um, do you have any questions for an action track? Do you do you need any any clarification from some of the points brought forward? Uh, please use this opportunity um, to bring that up or use the chat function um, for that. And then afterward, I'll try to. Um, to summarize uh, the key points that have been brought up and then hand over this, this discussion back to Kisumu County. You know, from the discussions that we've had today, um, what are those key points? What are those priorities that Kisumu County identifies um, as, as some of the initiatives that they would want to work on? Uh, some of the initiatives that they want to prioritize and take forward in order to, to enable transformation of the local food system. And then uh, from these, uh, we are able to identify um, or pick out some of those commitments that we are we can put forward um, towards the UN Food System, but then also um, to work on um, as we as we embark on this decade of action. So I think I'll pause here for a minute or thirty seconds just to give you a chance to ask questions, um, to 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 ask for clarification if you need to, or use the chat function. Okay, um, I think, um, yeah. yes, Mr. Obanga? Yes, how are you? I'm fine, Sorry, thank you. I've been, uh, I've been having problems uh, with the link. Oh, no. And uh, I, came when, I came in when the meeting uh, was almost coming to an end. But I can ask a small question mm -hmm. to, I think uh, I came when uh, Daniel, if Daniel, yeah, and Daniel was talking uh, in uh, in their work. Did they come uh, about uh, what we call uh, champion farmers, lead farmers, or model farmers? Because he was talking, uh, he talked a lot about lack of extension service. Uh, lack of extension officers in the field. And uh, I think uh, since 1984, there has been a change 
towards uh, uh, extension uh, provision. When uh, extension, in extension, we have been assisted a lot by development partners, especially the, the, the CBOs and the NGOs they have got into this and has been assisting a lot. And the extension has never been a county government or a national government matter alone. As he come, did they come across uh, areas where we have lead farmers that can act to demonstrate uh, the agriculture technologies that we have here? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Daniel, did any of that come up um, during the discussion? Um, um, issues of um, extension officers into the field? I think what was emphasized was the, the fact that um, before, in, in years gone, gone by, say maybe 10, 20 years down over um, in, in times past, they used to have a lot of extension officers, but then with uh, new policies and uh, the new constitution, that this has been drastically reduced. And that essentially uh, we need to teach all that our farmers need training on some, on when we want to say, we want to emphasize nature-based nature solutions. They need to understand what that entails and how that can be done. And if we don't have um, adequate uh, extension officers or extension services, it may be challenging to do this. That was what we emphasized there. And that so uh, the recommendation was that the county government should look uh, towards uh, improving this in the county, uh, improving these services in the county. Yes, I agree to that. Actually, we are looking forward to that, to improve extension services. But there are quite a number of other development partners that are doing extension work, actually in uh, most parts of Kenya, Kisumo in oh. And uh, I think that should also be looked into. What would be their role? We should bring up their role. Their roles would also be clear in all what we are doing in extension. That is what I mean. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that. Absolutely. Um, thank you for, for that clarification. And um, so do we have um, other other questions before I can I can summarize some of the key um, some of the key points that have come out from this discussion and then I hand this over to um, to Kisum County and then our colleagues at FAO. Okay, um, so I think we've had quite a very rich discussion today, and um, and I've just tried to capture some of the key of the key points, and and these are really focusing around some of the actions or where the opportunities do lie within Kisumu in transforming the food system, and I think um, I've been able to capture this under five key points. I think one of them that looks at um, first of all policy frameworks. So this has showed up in all the discussions. Um, um, and action track one, action track two, action track four. So there's been a recognition um, that there's still room um, to, 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 to develop an enabling a policy environment. And then the other one has been related to infrastructure and then um, sensitization campaigns, um, then looking at uh, building food networks and stakeholder groups, then as well as um, upskilling opportunities. So I'll just um, go into this, um, these five key points and highlight um, what, um, what has been um, really identified under the different action tracks. So under policy frameworks, and I think um, what, what came up strongly was the need to create an enabling environment um, for the transformation of the food system. And this starts from, first of all, uh, contextualizing the regional as well as the national foods, food and nutrition policies, um, and then bringing them down to the local level. And um, so these are policies and regulations that are related to different, um, to different points across the food value chain. So this should be able to guide growth across the food value chain with 
with regard to production. So looking at agricultural inputs to promote safety, looking at um, of, at regulating fishing, and being that Kisumu is a is a port city, um, looking at um, also urban agriculture, how to create an enabling environment for this, and then um, as well as um, looking at um, at, at, at issues around um, agroecology, uh, permaculture, as um, as some of the of the sustainable ways of, of of doing agricultural production and how this can be encouraged to take place uh, within the county. Um, then also um, under logistics and transportation, I think um, being that Kisumu really heavily depends on getting in food from outside the county and transporting food, so enabling um, the growth of logistics and transportation sector. Um, that favors um, safe transportation of food um, across um, across the, the county, but then also within the county. And then I think importantly, issues of consumption um, were identified. How can um, consumption be regulated um, locally, um, especially looking at um, enabling this to happen, um, health consumption of healthy and nutri nutrition food, how this can happen uh, in schools, um, through school feeding programs, um, through um, public hospitals, as well as other institutions such as prisons. Um, so this is where opportunities really lie in shaping uh, food consumption, and therefore um, they should be exploited uh, strongly uh, in driving uh, access to safe and nutritious food. Um, I think also importantly, issues of trade and marketing were brought up. Um, how, can, how can the county level in partnership with, uh, with, national, with national institutions, how can they support um, farmers in accessing markets? as well as um, improving trade and marketing of food. And, um, and, this, and this is looked at really beyond formal channels, but then also looking at informal channels where food is being traded, um, both uh, formally and informally. And then as strongly the issue of waste management didn't come up, and then um, how can the county look at enabling policies um, for, for the circular, for, for, for growth of the circular economy, you know, where waste management is looked at across the food value chain right from production, but then also to end of life of food. And then looking at this waste as a resource um, that, can be, um, that can be used to, um, to, to produce energy, to produce fertilizers, but then can be fed back into other, other, other areas across the food value chain. Um, then also issues are brought up about um, incentivizing and empowering uh, participation of vulnerable groups, especially the youth and women. Um, really what are those initiatives at county level or what are those initiatives that can be done in partnership with national government um, to enable the to enable the participation of especially women and youth in access to land in access to, to other resources that can enable production um, as well as um, access to food across the food value chain um, and then issues um, also there's an opportunity uh, for, for policies around inclusive and food sensitive urban planning uh, that recognizes the role of both formal and informal actors across the food value chain, um, as well as um, the role of the city, but then also um, the city's hinterland, that is the rural areas that supply um, the supply food uh, for the city. Um, and so, and also looking at other areas that um, urban planning can play a key role in, in strengthening the linkages across the food value chain. Um, then I think importantly what was raised uh, following the pandemic um, was the issue of emergency food planning. You know, um, I think there's an opportunity uh, for the city um, to, 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 to explore the, the looking at um, emergency food planning, uh, where does this food come from, and then how can the city uh, plan better in the event of another shock um, to the food system. Um, then also importantly, um, access to finance, um, and either small-scale finance, for, for small scale farmers and other actors across the food value chain, but then also looking at um, larger scale um, finance uh, financing opportunities. Um, and this would be in form of revolving loans um, or other loaning mechanisms. So really looking at what structures can, can be put in place either by the city in partnership with uh, stakeholders such as funders and financiers um, in order to support access to finance for, for both small scale, but then also large scale actors across the food value chain. So these were recognized as the policy opportunity areas. Uh, but then when we went to infrastructure, um, what came out strongly across the, the different discussion group was, first of all, there's need for water infrastructure. And I think being that it's uh, Kisumu is a port city, there's really an opportunity to, to explore the 
the closeness to um to the lake to be able to um to to access water for for use across the food value chain and then also transport infrastructure was um was also um, important we came through strongly and then also market infrastructure was uh, was another key point uh, market infrastructure in terms of coolers for for traders but then also other um other infrastructure that enables um that that facilitates access to to safe to safe food um and then also um enables healthy food um or food to stay for a longer time without um without going bad and then importantly we are market information systems i think there is need to put up a market information system infrastructure that allows for information um that allows for information sharing across the different stakeholders and uh, where farmers can access um market information where the markets are uh, where traders both formal and informal are able to 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 understand uh, issues around pricing where food is um is most needed and then be able to um to adjust accordingly and then also other technologies are making them more accessible across um across different stages of of the value chain and then for sensitization campaigns this was around um sustainable food production um local nutritious food and i think the the issue of um of 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 nutritious local fish uh, was brought up and then as well as agriculture and food related education and courses so this is uh, another opportunity area um that can be um that can be um pushed um by at county level or in partnership with other stakeholders and then uh, importantly building food networks and stakeholder groups i think at the beginning of our discussion you uh, mr samba highlighted um what really food governance is about is creating spaces for conversation creating spaces for collaboration and here that's why this point is also important um that there's still an opportunity um to build food networks and stakeholder groups at county level um so this can be used for sharing information for creating spaces uh, for collaboration and working collectively um resource centers and the extension officers and i think during the discussion i it came up that there are already some existing uh, resource centers uh, within kisumu but then how can we uh, expand these um to to increase accessibility and to increase areas where where uh, different actors across the food value chain are able to to access information and other resources and then of course um uh, issues for upskilling across the the food value chain um so those were some of the key points um that i picked out during the the discussions um if there are other key points um please feel free to to add this to the chat but then also do raise your hand and and let me know um what what is some of those key things that you pick up that you feel are important um to share with uh, share with our county but then also with the different stakeholders that are present here today Okay, uh, please feel free to use the chat function. And I think at this juncture, um, I think given the discussions that we've had, given uh, the summary points, and also um, some of the interactions that we've had, I would like to um, to hand this over to to Kisumu County um, to really um, to really look at some of these key points presented, and from these, what are those priority areas um, that match with the Kisumu County's vision um, uh, for transforming the food system? And then, what are some of those key commitments that we can always come back to, and um, and 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 ask the city what is the progress on this? Where do we need support on, or how can we move together towards achieving um, those goals? Um, I'll hand this over to um, to Kisumu County. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chair. I have first to appreciate uh, what, uh, what we have gone through uh, transpo transforming food security in Kisumu County and uh, Kisumu City. Uh, Kisumu City, the food systems in Kisumu City is different from other cities uh, like Nairobi, and Mombasa. The city is within a county. And when we talk of food situation and food systems in Kisumu city, 
we have to look at the surrounding, the periurban, because it usually extends beyond the city borders. And uh, some of the food, the food systems is controlled a lot by what happens in uh, the periurban and the, the other parts of the county. And as uh, it has come, Kisumu depends a lot. Kisumu County and the city depends a lot on imported foods, both cereals and vegetables, and even milk, the animal products have been coming from outside uh, the county. And it is important as it has come out in this deliberation that we find ways on how to improve food systems in the county and in the city. Uh, the, the, what has come out from this meeting is important to us, especially the area of uh, food availability, where we have been talking of nutritious foods, the local indigenous vegetables, and uh, the politics affecting sustainability. Those are the policy areas. And I think it is important to us that we have to rally our people to produce nutritious foods for consumption in the county and in the city. We have looked at ways, actually, the assessments have looked at ways. And uh, I had talks about demonstration plots, improving extension services, access to markets, sensitization campaigns, which are very, very important to us. I agree that we have to work together and the county government is currently looking on how to increase the extension service provision by recruiting more extension staff. But as I said uh, in my question early, earlier, extension service now has to be a joint collaborative work with other development partners. And I think we should be looking into policies, strong policies bringing the role of the partners like the NGOs, the CBOs into this. And uh, you know, the government staff alone cannot help much, but with collaboration with partners, we can do something. Uh, from uh, the from the opportunities that we have, I think Kisumu City and Kisumu County is ready. Is ready to look into the issues coming from this meeting and we will look at them and come back to you. I hope you will share with us all this presentation and we look at them and see they are so important to us that we must see how we can start using them. And I think I'm so happy about it that I'm thinking of sharing the document, a document from this meeting with the governor, so he can see where we are moving. And uh, the, the county executive committee member for agriculture said that after this meeting, you should share with us the findings of the assessment. And from there, we can share it now with the county, including even the governor and then we can come up with a way forward and how 
we want this opportunity to be, to, to be taken up. And uh, that is what I can say now. And thank you very much for organizing this for Kisumu County. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Manga, for that. And, and you really hint on, on one important issue, I think, that has been going on uh, through, through our discussions today, the, the, the issue around um, collaboration and what role different partners can play. And I think um, present here on this call, we have partners from FAO, we have partners from ICLI Africa, as well as other stakeholders that have, have been working with, uh, with Kisumu, for example, the Flag Steering Committee. Um, and, and as well as um, CLIP, um, we have a representative from CLIP here. So really, it's, um, we are a community of people that are dedicated um, to, to supporting the county uh, to be able to, to achieve its, um, its vision or its priorities uh, towards, um, towards achieving or transforming uh, the food system. So and I think this, this has been a great platform to also hear from the county, to also hear from the different stakeholders on, um, on some of the key issues um, coming up. So thank you very much um, for, 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 your, for your encouraging words. And I think us as, as partners here, uh, to us, this is, this is a hinters or point, pointers on, way, um, on where we also need to, um, to, to put emphasis. I think also UN Habitat is present, have been very strong um, during our discussions. So we, we are partners that want to support um, the county in, in, in moving forward. Um, yeah. so, so at this juncture, um, thank you very much, um, um, Kisumu, for, 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 for hosting this dialogue. And then I would like to, um, to take this moment to please hand over to our FAO colleagues to close this dialogue and then also um, inform us on how this discussion will lead into the national or the regional dialogue process. Um, so that we know that our outputs, our discussions are not just ending here, but they're going to feed into a larger process uh, leading into the UN Food System Summit. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Solofina. Indeed, this has been a very interactive uh, session, and I'm happy to see that Kisumu is uh, very committed towards uh, this uh, process of transformation of the food systems. And uh, just to answer your question, uh, uh, Dr. Omanga, on the sharing of this information with the governor, that is actually part of the process of having this uh, independent dialogues ahead of the member state dialogues. Because after this, now the next step for Kisumu will be to have the member state uh, dialogues. And for Kenya, we have taken the regional block approach. So Kisumu will be part, as it is part of the Lake Region Economic Block, will have their dialogues as that region along with the other 12 counties in the, in the region. So some of the, the, the main reason we had this independent dialogue was to ensure the voice of the city is captured. And uh, just to reiterate, I think there's someone who mentioned that uh, when policies are being developed, they, they don't really include the urban cities. And this is part of the solution towards addressing the inclusion of urban cities. So yes, this, uh, this discussion will be, uh, will be summarized into a report and linked to the action tracks. And then these sentiments can be echoed and shared when having the, 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 the subnational dialogue for the Lake Region Economic Block. So that is the next step. And we are looking forward to continue to work with Kisumu uh, County and uh, link them to the, to the next process. We'll also be happy to link uh, the stakeholders who attended this dialogue to the other dialogues. I have my colleague on the call. I don't know whether he's still there, Josper. I think he has dropped off. I will be working with Josper towards uh, supporting Kisumu in uh, in and Kisumu and the and the and the region really in in having the the subnational dialogue. But I'm happy that the concerns of the city have been aired, and some of them are really specific to the city, especially looking at issues of diets and patterns that are really linked to the lifestyle. You know, like Kisumu right now, there are so many markets that are coming and many supermarkets are now selling food. So some of these issues on a cons and a sustainability of consumption, I'm seeing the issues, uh, some of the cross-cutting issues, including uh, policy, partnerships, research, because in as much as we had the different uh, action tracks, you could see that within the different action tracks, there were some issues that were being addressed by all the action tracks, including waste management, policy, and research. So how we are going to bring this together and make sure that these are very well captured during the member state dialogues, which will be now brought together when we have the national dialogues. 
So the the main uh, the main uh, reason behind having this independent dialogue is so that when Kenya now eventually has their national dialogue, the issues and the concerns of the urban food system are also addressed uh, nationally. And when we are developing the way forward and the and the strategies and policies, then the voice of the local community has also been included. So thank you very much for uh, participation in this uh, dialogue, and I'm happy that we have. We have kept momentum. I know we have kept you for over like three hours, but we are very happy. And also we'd really like to thank uh, Ikle, uh, Solofina and your team. Thank you so much for working with uh, Kenya and uh, Kisumu particular and uh, for your support. And we look forward to continued uh, uh, collaborations in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, for, uh, Winnie, for making for us the linkages and I think to assure us that this is not stopping here, but the discussion is continuing till we make sure that um, the voices of local actors are heard and what are the key issues are specific to, um, to the different um, urban or city level food systems. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, so colleagues, um, I think we're, we're almost coming to the end of our dialogue. Um, this has been a very interactive session. I think seeing from what has come out from the, from the discussion rooms. Um, thank you very much for participating and for, and for sharing with us um, the insights of, uh, from some of the work that you're doing. Um, I know um, three hours is a long time as Winnie has noted, uh, but you've been able to stay with us um, till the end and then also um, share with us um, what you're doing. Um, so we are, we are, we are holding um, other dialogues in different African cities. I think we'll have the Nairobi dialogue next week. If you're interested to join the dialogue, please follow the link uh, that Daniel will follow, will paste in the chat that will give an idea of which other dialogues are happening um, across the continent. Uh, the outputs uh, from this particular dialogue will be shared uh, with all uh, participants, um, with all participants from, um, that have attended the that have attended the, the, the dialogue, but then we'll also, I think, importantly share with, with Nairobi, Nairobi City, as well as Nairobi County, um, as some of the outcomes from this, uh, that, we, that can be valuable um, to your processes moving forward. Um, so thank you very much. Um, and I think um, I would like to, to officially close off this dialogue and invite you into other dialogues that are happening so that um, we can begin the discussion around um, city level food, uh, food systems, their challenges, as well as, as, well as the opportunities uh, that lie there. Um, so join us in all our uh, programs, um, also the African City Food Month. We'll also avail the recording um, of this entire dialogue um, so that you're able to, to gain further insights uh, away, from, away from this. Um, so thank you very much um, um, for, to the city of Kisumu for hosting us, to our different stakeholders for being a part of this, and to our presenters as well as facilitators. And we hope to continue working with you um, soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>